total of 10, isn't it? And he said, Master, you gave me five bags of silver to invest, and I've earned five more. And the master was full of praise. Well done, my good and faithful servant. You've been faithful in handling this small amount, so now I will give you many more responsibilities. Let's celebrate together. Then the servant who had received the two bags of silver came forward and said, Master, you gave me two bags of silver to invest, and I've earned two more. And the master said, Well done, my good and faithful servant. You've been faithful in handling this small amount, so now I'll give you many more responsibilities. Let's celebrate together. Then the master with the one bag of silver came and said, Master, I knew you were a harsh man, harvesting crops you didn't plant and gathering crops you didn't cultivate. I was afraid I would lose your money, so I hid it in the earth. Look, here is your money back. And the master replied, You wicked and lazy servant. If you knew I harvested crops I didn't plant and gathered crops I didn't cultivate, why didn't you deposit my money in the bank? At least I could have got some interest on it. And then he ordered, Take the money from this servant and give it to the one with ten bags of silver. To those who use well what they are given, even more will be given, and they'll have an abundance. But from those who do nothing, even what little they have will be taken away. Boy. Now, throw this useless servant into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. In the 31st verse, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he'll sit down upon his glorious throne and all the nations will be gathered in his presence and he'll separate the people as a shepherd separates sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. Heavenly Father, in the precious name of Jesus, your servant comes right now, Lord, with aching heart, wishing so often I'd do better and more for you to glorify your precious name. But with a heart filled with praise that your word, Lord, leads us and guides us in pathways of righteousness, and that you have grace abundant and mercy overwhelming. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the hope we have in you that you'll guide and direct us, Lord, tonight, that these words will reach into where people, to all of us live. We ask in Jesus' precious name, amen. <clears throat> I'm going to begin in the latter part of the reading that I gave to you in verse 24 down through verse 30. It helps us to realize those verses that talked about that one servant that hid the one talent of, or the one bag of silver, and the King James doesn't say one talent, isn't that what it says, I think? <clears throat> it helps us to realize that life's not a joke, that life is not a waste, and as I quoted to you this morning from James Russell Lowell, life is real and life is earnest and the grave is not the goal. That's Longfellow, isn't it? Life is real and life is earnest and the grave is not the goal. To dust thou art and dust returnest was not spoken of the soul. Amen. So life's not a joke and that's what that begins to help. We, we begin to grip that, grip that. We will someday give an account of our living. And I've heard those, and man, since I was a child, that life is the dressing room for eternity. Life is the dress rehearsal. And if you don't make it in the dress rehearsal, you're not going to be in the performance. <laughs> I've heard that all of my life. And it is in life when we prepare for what God has planned for us in eternity. This is the place we're preparing. This is it. It's very clear that God has wonderful and marvelous plans for us from the moment we're conceived, then lived, and died, 
and for eternity. God has plans. He didn't bring you here for no reason at all. I'm glad for that. I'm glad no matter where we pick up and walking with God in our lives, God puts us back into his plan to glorify his name through the rest. And that thrills me. He, he loves us so much. <laughs> what a wonderful God we have. You know, God has laws and he's always kept them. What's one of the laws that he has that you can you remember? Can you remember a law that God has? How about the law of gravity? Huh? How about the law of gravity? If we drop you out of a plane a mile, do you think you'd live? I doubt it. Now, I have heard one time where a guy lived when he fell his parachute, didn't open all the way. Maybe the, the little, little, little one did. And when he fell, he fell through a whole bunch of uh, uh, evergreen trees. And right down through the, 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 the branches that were loose and fell into a big bank of snow. But I don't think any of us that happened with us. First of all, there's no snow out there. Second, there's no evergreen trees around close. Okay. So the law of gravity stands. Another one that stands is the law of light. What does eternal the light? What does it do? Push back the darkness. Aren't you glad for God's law of light? I am. I'm really thrilled about that because the light pushes back the darkness of sin. The darkness of hate, the darkness of corruption, the darkness of disappointment, the darkness of all the things that would happen in our life. God, God's light pushes that back. And he gives us something worth living for. I love that. Hallelujah for that. And then another law that God has is we reap what we sow. I, was, I also heard you, that could be you reap what you sow. You know, R-I-P, S-E-W. Yeah, all the times that happens too, okay? But we reap what we sow. It's true. The law that all of us, ha that God has, is that all of us will be rewarded according to our works. Isn't that what it says in the Bible? The books were open, and the book of life, and everybody is recorded, is rewarded according to his works. But if your name's not in the Lamb's book of life, not going to make it to the city. Isn't that, isn't that something else? But God loves us so much. He loves all of his special creation, and that's you and me, so very much that he asks us to love him. And love is never forced, but is chosen. He loves you so much, and how he made you a free will person, a person to make choices that he will not make you serve him or go to his eternal, eternal reward to enjoy his home, his heaven. No. If you end your life without him, you've made your choice for hell. Mm. Y'all, God doesn't send us to hell. We made the choice ourselves. I'm glad, that's, I'm glad that God is, that, I'm glad we're catching on to that. That God loves us so much, he won't make us serve him. He honors your choice. He loves you that much that he honors your choice. That's a powerful thought. Say, well, does he really want me nailed? No, he's going to do everything possible to get you, keep you out of hell. Amen. God, for Jesus warns us over and over. He pleads, come unto me. All you that labor and heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Come on, walk with me. He's not stiff arming you, saying, Get out of the way, I don't want you. No, he's pleading for all of us, for it's not his will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That's God's plan. Am I getting that across to you? <laughs> I hope so. A boy grabbed a hold of me, and I just, Lord, please help us that people realize God honors our choice. And that's an awesome thing. Just think how much God loves us. Just think, he honors our choice. Lord, I choose you. Well, you know what? When we choose him, he'll do everything in the world to help us get home to the city. Uh, <laughs> I mean, he'll stop a lot of things working against you to help you get home to the city. Amen. He's moving everything in our life to help us. And he's moving everything in our life to help us choose him if we haven't chosen him. For all things work together for the good. And that God's after us. 
for his glory and his life. He wants to get us home. He wants to make us a blessing as we journey the road of life. I don't know if I got that across this morning, but that's what I was sure trying to say. In this corrupt, wicked generation and era we're in this time, God can help you and me to live to bring glory and honor. Wow, think of it. You and me, who are we? Well, I don't know. When I'm gone, uh, if you think you're something very special for everybody around you, you know, and everybody's going to really miss you when you're gone, just put your hand in a bucket of water and then take it out and observe the hole. Well, we may be forgotten about it as soon as we're here, you know. <laughs> I don't know whether, but I want to tell you something, y'all. In this life, we're preparing for the eternity. Oh, let's prepare for heaven. Let's walk with God. <laughs> Amen. He doesn't stiff arm us. In fact, Scripture very pointed, he weeps for us. Yesterday I was, I think yesterday I was going across the river and looking across our cities and I was thinking, oh God, please, please give us folks in the, in the salvation. Please, Lord, bring a great awakening. Do you know that the Quad Cities has probably never had a great awakening? Did you know that at one time Davenport was known as Little Chicago? There was so much killing in Davenport. Do you all know that? But I want to tell you, God's been trying to awaken us. Been there's some good churches here, some strong churches here. Calvary down the street and Harvest down over here and different ones that are reaching out. And I, I tell you, we, we serve a great God, y'all. He's trying to help folks wake up. So I've been praying, Lord, please. What did he do when he looked over Jerusalem? What did he do? He wept and said, how oft would I have gathered you? And you see, but he said, you would not. What, what is that saying to us? He won't make you. He knew what was ahead around the corner. He knew what was there. But when we turn him down, we reject him. Oh, God, please help us. Well, let remind you again, he loves you so much that he has taken the penalty for your sins and mine on himself. He came to this sin-cursed earth. Now, folks, think about it. He left heaven. He left the eternal city and came to this sin-cursed earth. That's what happened when Adam and Eve sinned. God cursed this earth. Folks, you just think of the beauty that we enjoy. What do you think it was like before the curse came? And he was willing to come. He walked among us without sin. He was rejected. He was cursed. He was threatened. He was denied. He was betrayed. He suffered at the hands of those he had created. He was beaten. He was disrobed. He was nailed to a cross, hanging in agony and in torturous pain. Yet on the cross, he showed his love and compassion again and again. What did he say? Father, forgive them. Wow. <laughs> Now, according to one of the Gospels, it says that both the thieves were railing on him. But one of them woke up. At least one of them really came alive about it. And he said to the other, why are we doing this? Or why are you doing that? He said, you and I are guilty. He doesn't deserve it. Would you remember me when you come into your kingdom? And what did Jesus say? Today. <laughs> Isn't that marvelous, y'all? If you don't think God isn't trying to get you home to heaven, you, you need to turn your brain around. <laughs> Amen. Oh, yet on the cross he showed his love and compassion. And he died in the prime of life. Somewhere right in the time he could have really been going, yet he died. And yet he did in all that, he, yet he did is all that we might enjoy the privilege of, of being his follower. I love it. Verse 31 that I gave you, 
which is not in this story, but starts the next one, helps us to remember there's coming a day when God will judge and examine all the people of this world and earth. All of us will stand before him to give an account of our living. Notice this. <laughs> Notice this. He divided the sheep from the goats. Where did he put the sheep? On the right hand? Isn't that what we got today? <laughs> the right and the left and the politics and all that. <laughs> anyway. But now, go back with me a minute. I, I think something to try to explain. I remember Grandpa Johnson, Johnson would was really concerned about some of the parables that Jesus gave. And this could be one you're concerned about. For that man with the one talent, with the one bag of gold, what did he say? I knew you were a harsh man. You reap what you didn't sow. You took what it wasn't yours. And what did the master say to him? If you knew I was this kind of man, why didn't you at least give it to the bank? But folks, what it really should be saying is, young man, old man, whoever you are, that's your thinking. Come on. In all of your reading of the master, in all of your examination of the master, is there one time he was a harsh man, cursing, reaping where he didn't sow? Not the master. You see, that was that man's concept. It wasn't how the master is. I told you that one day my David said, Daddy, perception's everything. And I said, well, I don't know what he said. Well, it's everything to the person that has that perception. And yeah, that's probably true. And his perception was what? Totally wrong. Think with me a minute. What was the perception the Pharisees had of Christ? They looked at him totally different than who he was. You see, your perception of him really makes a lot of difference. What did the Lord say to him? You wicked and evil servant. Wow. And folks, he said, cast him into outer darkness. Think about it. I, um, I, I think, as I was thinking about that, in this era, the thinking seems to be that when people die, they or we will fly high in the sky. They're going to a better place. Everything's okay. But let, you re let me remind you, that's not what the Bible says. When we face him, we're going to give an account of our lives. That's what I just read. I just There it is. He divided the sheep from the goats. Every one of them, every one of us will be, we'll have to face that. We'll have to do. Let me remind you, God's word warns us we will all give an account of every word, every action, every reaction of all of our living, how we treated other folks, and how we served him by serving others. Yes, there's a time of rewards. Amen. And there's a time of rewards for living without him. But I want to tell you what. There's a time of rewards of living with him. <laughs> amen and amen. Oh, I thrill and give God all the glory and honor. And I give him praise and, and amen. You see... The rewards help us when we get to analyzing all about going to heaven. And rewards explain God's plan in getting everyone there. What a wonderful reward for faith in Jesus. Get home to heaven. Amen. Believing on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. But what about that thief on the cross? His reward is what? Well, he's going to get home to heaven. But what kind of works did he have? Remember, that's what it said. He'll be judged, we'll be judged by every one of our works. Every one. Wow. Compare him to the apostle Paul or Paul to the thief on the cross. Paul suffered. Saul would beat. Paul went through torture. Paul went through hardship. All the years of his life after he became a Christian. 
and he died at the hands of Caesar. What's it going to be like? Well, welcome home, Paul. I'm glad you're here. <laughs> no, it's going to be a lot more than that. What did he say? <laughs> Again, the kingdom of heaven be illustrated about the man who went on a long trip and he gave the five bags and two bags and the one, dividing in portion according to their abilities. Aren't you glad for that? I, I'd have to tell you, I've been studying through this with the queen going home, several of the things from Billy Graham. I'd have to tell you all, I don't know, I don't even know a president, let alone a queen. Huh? What about it? Come on. How many do you know? Do you know any queens, Norma? How about it, Sherry? Got any queens in your life? Well, maybe a lot of folks have played cards and they got queens, but that's not what I'm talking about, okay? They run away from cards. They'll destroy you. But anyway, if I compare my life to according to his, but he said he rewards according to what he gives you. Your ability, how you can do, how you can be, how you've taken what you have that he's given you and used it for his glory. I was telling my wife coming home while I got, I've been coming back to church while I go for meeting. I said, honey, thank you for your good organ playing. I know that's my wife, but listen, y'all, I thank God the lady can play that organ like that. She makes the music ring around here, you know. We don't have a guitar and don't get the drums enough. And thank God we got a violin. Hey, Lonnie, tell her, thank God we got a violin. It's laying right up there in case you need to take it home too. But, oh, I'm glad for that. But aren't you glad that it rewards according to our several abilities? Huh? How about it? Larry, if he was here tonight, I'd say, Larry, come up here and sing with us. He said, no, nah, not me. Everybody go home. <laughs> Aren't you glad God's that kind of God? He looks at how you are. He's given you something. Amen. Amen. Don became a fisherman, and then he became a fisher teacherman, and then he became a man that spread it around on television, and, and he's even on the Internet every once in a while. I saw where, uh, what's our friend's name? Dan. Dan said, I was out fishing with Don. <laughs> what God's using, Don? Aren't you glad God can use us? Amen. I'll tell you what, parents, one of the greatest things in the world is to be able to help children go with God. One of the greatest rewards. <laughs> amen, amen. So he rewards us according to our several abilities. And I, I'm glad for that. I was looking for thoughts of reward, and I didn't have time today. In fact, I got interrupted quite a bit again. <laughs> But I, I looked at Jer David Jeremiah. He said, God has five crowns of reward for his people when they get to heaven. The first one is the victor's crown. Remember? In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, he said, run the race. Stay at it. Don't quit the victor's crown. Don't quit. Keep going. And the other, in 1 Thessalonians 2, 9, is the crown of rejoicing. Y'all, <laughs> I want to be in that crowd. Janice, did you ever sing when the great celestial choir begins to sing? Did you ever sing that? Oh, man, we did when I was growing up. And uh, our, our, our church had some guys that could sing, some ladies. Boy, and I mean, they'd pull out the stops and sing that song. And I determined when I was a kid, I want to be in that crowd. When that great celestial choir begins to sing. Man, just think about it. No limitation. Oh, no holding back. We won't run out of breath. You know, won't run out of words. You'll just keep praising him throughout eternity. Come on, God has great rewards for us. The third one is we have a crown of righteousness. Oh, I want to tell you, when you live for God, he's taking track. He's keeping record of it. Amen. And I, I tell you one thing that thrills me about all the crowns is we'll be able to cast them at his feet. And say, worthy is the lamb that was slain. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, I want to make the city, y'all. I want to be in that number. And then in James, it says, in Revelation too, it says, we have a crown of life. Oh, to live with him forever and ever. Wow. A crown of abundance. No more sin. Wow. No more sickness. 
no more tears. He'll wipe those bad things from our minds and place it just like, oh, man, why in the world I do that? It's all God. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then the last one that, that David Jeremiah says, we'll have the crown of glory. To God be the glory. Amen. We love that thought, don't we? Hallelujah. I want to make it in. But let me tell you something else. He doesn't not only crown us for the eternal city, or get us rewarded in the eternal city, he rewards us here. I mean, it's the truth. Wow. Wow. Now, we were singing a while ago about uh, uh, our burdens light, you know, here. Well, I want to tell you, sometimes with the walking with Jesus, it's a heavy burden he carry for those that are lost. and those. But his light, his burden, he carries with us. Like I preached the other day in that crown, I mean, in that yoke, he said, come unto me and take my yoke upon you. He carries the heavy side. He's there to see us through. But there's wonderful things that God has for us on this earth. In Matthew chapter 19, 29, it says, and everyone that has forsaken houses or brothers or sisters or mother or wife or mother or father or children or lands for my sake, shall receive a hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life. Hallelujah. In Matthew 21, 22, And all things whatsoever you shall ask in, my, in prayer, believing, you shall receive. Now we ask, remember we say, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You know, when the Lord's our shepherd, what do we want? What the Lord wants, isn't that right? We ask in His will. And then in Luke 9, 48, and he said to them, Whosoever shall receive this child in my name receives me, and whosoever receives me receives my Father that sent me. For he that is least among you all, the same shall be great. A little child. A little child. Oh, y'all, I'm glad we... <laughs> I'm, I'm glad I have to stop trying to sing with them. <laughs> Those two little ones are something else, aren't they? But I want to tell you, we love children. We love children. Today we were reading with Troy. Oh, and by the way, Norma, we invited you to come with us, but you went to your daughter's, you know, or your daughter came to you. We had an extra chair sitting there for you. It, it, it didn't fill up. Nobody came. But anyway, and I, we were sitting there, and dear old Troy wanted to know with, from Mike and Laura, said, what about your granddaughter? Remember little Lily? <laughs> I'm glad you all accepted Oh, I tell you, I'm thrilled that y'all are that kind of people. I appreciate you so much reaching out. I, I, I wish everything worked beautiful and wonderful, but as long as you got me, you'll have to put up with things. No matter what it is, we'll keep doing for Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. In John chapter 16, 24, he said, You've not ever asked before, ask anything in my, in, in my name, but if you ask in my name, you shall receive it. And I like this little thought, that your joy might be full. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? Y'all, he wants to give us his joy and peace and his love as we journey this road of life. He wants to fill us full and run us over with it. That's why I love to come and sing together and praise him. Oh, somebody said, you preachers like to sing because you want to hear your voice. No, I want to praise him. He's worthy of our praise. He's worthy of, our jo of everything about our lives. Why? He fills us with joy unspeakable and full of glory. The peace passes all understanding. His love is beyond comprehension. What a God we serve, y'all. I love him. I love Jesus. Oh, what joy it is to walk with him on this road of life. And in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, it says, You shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And folks, that's what he gives us, power to live this life, to bring glory to his name, and to be witnesses throughout the world. Lonnie, thanks for doing your best to help us get online to try to get all around the world for Jesus' sake. Can we touch somebody? Y'all, if there's one person that makes it to heaven because of what we've invested, what does the Bible say? Worth the world. That's how valuable you are. You're worth the world. <laughs> Hallelujah. I love that. In Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 8, knowing that whosoever 
that knowing that whatsoever good things any man does, the same shall receive of the Lord, whether that man's a slave or whether he's a free man. In Colossians 3.24, knowing that of the Lord you shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for you serve the Lord Jesus. I love it, don't you? Amen. It's going to be worth it, y'all. Sometimes when we go through hard places, and we've been walking with some through some hard places, and here's our dear ones, Myrna and, and Myrna, you've stood by your little daddy for all of these years, and thank you for how you've tried, and Myrna, how you've, and, and Cheryl, how you've stood true. <laughs> Bless your hearts. Oh, I tell you, there's a reward coming for being true to Jesus Christ. What a day that's going to be when my Jesus I shall see. Father, bless the word to us tonight. May your name be honored and glorified by all that we do and say. We ask in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Lottie, let's go to, we'll understand it better by and by. Y'all know that song real well, don't you? Janice, get up here and sing with me so they can see you because Lonnie didn't take it offline until after a while. I, and Myrna, come on. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. <laughs> We're doing our best to make these things work. They don't all work real good, but they, they keep going. The thing I found out about electronics, it, clit, it has glitches, bad ones. We are often tossed and driven on the restless sea. We are often tossed and driven on the restless sea of time. Sober skies and howling windless thoughts and see the bright sunshine in that land of perfect day when the mists have rolled away. We will understand it better by and by. Oh, by and by when the morning comes. All the saints of God gathered home, we will tell the story how we've overcome, and we'll understand it better by and by. Trials dark on every hand, and we cannot understand all the ways that God would lead us to that blessed promised land. But he'll guide us with his eye, and we'll follow. <laughs> Hallelujah! Oh, we'll understand it better by and by. Oh, by and by, when the morning comes, when all the saints of God gathered home, we will tell the story how we've overcome. And we'll understand it better by and by. Temptations, hidden snares, often take us unawares. And our hearts are made to bleed for many a thoughtless word or deed. And we wonder why the test, when he tried to do our best. But we'll understand it better by and by. Hallelujah. Oh, by and by, when the morning comes, when all the saints of God are gathered home, we will tell the story how we've overcome, and we'll understand it better by and by. Oh, by and by. When the morning comes and all the saints of God gathered home, we will tell the story how we've overcome and we'll understand it better by and by. <laughs> now let's go clear on down to that other one, Lonnie, and when we get to the end of the way and you come up here and join us, okay? I like this old song. Boy, I can remember... One of my uncles on the other side of the fence used to sing this song. In fact, he sang it, I think, the Sunday morning when he died that Sunday afternoon. His name was Burrow Malloy. In fact, I was on the, my knees at the floor just sitting as a kid. I don't know how old I was, seven or eight, when all of a sudden he had a church book in his hand and he pitched the book across the 
everything and Merle was gone. I tell you all, it's going to be worth it when you and I get there. The sands have been washed in the footprints of the stranger on Galilee's shore. And the voice that subdued those rough billows will be heard in Judea. But the path of that long Galilean With joy I will follow today And the toils of the road will seem no end When I get to the end of the way And the toils and the toils of the road will seem nothing when I get to the end of the world. There are so many hills to climb upward. I often am longing for rest. Oh, this is good thinking now. But he who appoints me my pathway knows just what is needful and best. I know in his word he has promised that my strength it shall be as <laughs> Hallelujah. And the toils of this road will seem nothing when I get to the end of the way. And the toils, and the toils of this road will seem nothing when I get to. And Father, we're so thankful that your grace is sufficient for us as we journey this road. And Lord, there's many times there's a lot of hills we hadn't planned on. There are hard struggles, there are situations that are tough. But you've always promised grace, Lord. And we look back now across these years, and Lord, we think what it's going to be when we come to that end. Lord, <laughs> we really won't need to understand anymore. Amen. We'll just trust you because you're the God to see us through. Amen. Now, Lord, let these next two verses be a blessing to every one of us, that your name will be glorified by our lives as we journey this road of life. In Jesus' name I pray. Number three. He loves me too well to forsake me. Or give me one trial to pass. All his people have been nearly purchased. And Satan can never blame such. By and by I shall see him and praise him. In the city of unending day. And the toils of this road will seem nothing when I get to the end of the way. And the toils of this road will seem nothing. When I get to the end of the way When the last feeble step has been taken And the gates of that city 
Think about the things God's brought you through. <laughs> Don't we serve a marvelous God? Mm -hmm. Bless his name forever. In benediction, I'm going to go to Hebrews again tonight. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, <laughs> make you perfect that is, make you complete in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. And all of us said, Amen. Amen. How about praise the Lord? Praise, praise the, the Lord. Lord. How about hallelujah? Hallelujah. Amen. Love you all. Glad you're here tonight.